Basketball is on the air. Welcome inside McDougal McLennan Arena as the Eagles get ready to play their first game of the new decade. And their first game in MEAC place. The Eagles take it on the Rattlers of Florida AM. Jonathan Durham joined alongside a Hall of Famer Joe Simmons. Joe, happy new year, man. Good happy to see new year you again. Too, man. It's good to be here. How was the holiday for you? It was good, man. I got a chance to relax a little bit, got back in the flow, and you know, things are going pretty good. The Eagles going out to the floor. They're back in their home whites. The new alternate home jerseys for this year. We'll get to the starting lineups. First, for the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Number two, Cameron Reeves, a 6'2 junior guard from Champaign, Illinois. Number 23, Bryce Moraine, the 6'5 junior forward from Tampa, Florida. Number 25, DJ Jones, as the Rattlers will control the tip and take it from left to right. 
on your radio dial. DJ Jones, the 6'9", Richard Jr. Ford from Brusley, Louisiana. We'll get to the rest of the lineup in a moment. It's a drive on the left side, stepping out to the corner. Now it's Reeves. Reeves absolutely tore the Eagles apart the last time these two teams met. Here's a three on the left side. It's missed. Rebounded by Ty Graves, and the Eagles have the first chance here. Mike Melvin will slow things down, and Melvin will hand it off for Graves. Graves circles around, hands to Pinnell. Now back to Melvin. Melvin off the screen, driving in, gets underneath, and he'll step out of bounds. So both teams get their first possessions, but nothing comes of it. Yeah, both teams coming out a little bit out of control, both sides, and uh, that time he just got too far down on the baseline. We tried to drop it off, but he got too deep. So the Eagles set up in their full court press, 1-2-2. Two, two. Rattlers working against it, bounce pass up the floor, misses the target, but does fall into the hands of Florida A&M. They keep moving. MJ Randolph will hand it off for Reeves. Reeves holds it on the left wing, 10 to shoot for FAMU. They're in their green jerseys today, orange trim, orange numbers and letters. Four to shoot. Melton bounces inside. This one poked out of bounds by Mike Melvin, and that expires the shot clock. Nice defensive possession that time by the Eagles. Did a good job of switching. That time Florida a had a big with a small on him in the post, and he did what he had to do, diving for the ball down low to keep it from being able to get it and get the shot up for an easy attempt. So North Carolina Central coming up the floor, still looking to be the team to score first in this game. It's Fennell at the point. It's been a stat stuffer this season, Fennell has. As this one is tipped out of bounds. Actually, it's going to be an errant pass. I thought it was altered. But FAMU will get it. Yeah, both teams starting the game a little bit sloppy, not really in a good rhythm right now, trying to find it and fill each other out. And Fennell nearly able to swipe that one away in the backcourt. FAMU has it. We played a minute and a half. Nobody has scored. It's a drive on the right side from Randolph. He'll double clutch it as he's fouled. It's going to go against Evan Claiborne. That'll be his first. Team foul number one. Yeah, Claiborne didn't have to press down as much as he did. He was trying to close the gap, and in doing so, when he went up, he was able to create some body contact, but uh, Claiborne could have probably gone straight up from where he was and got an easy block on that attempt. So two free throws coming up for Florida A&M. They're trying to be the team to score first. It's MJ Randolph at the free throw line. His first free throw, he wants the follow through, but it goes begging to the left. And he'll try one more time. Randolph in the last game, picked up 13 points and five boards on the road at Hilton Arena in Ames. Second free throw missed as well, rebounded by Claybull. Well, this is basketball, so eventually somebody has to score. <laughs> You'd think so. Melvin will hand it off for Graves. Left side, Fennell, top of the floor, Blunt. Blunt's gonna drive, goes out to Melvin. Melvin to the baseline, he'll float it, it's no good. Rebounded by Randall. Two minutes gone by, nobody has scored. On the left side, holding it there, Melton reversed over to the right side, driving his Reeves. Fadeaway jumper is no good from the Central Illinois native. Second chance, swatted off the glass. The third chance, the fall away, finally goes in for Bryce Moraine. So Florida A&M scores first. But the Eagles gave FAMU all they could in that last trip down. They and did. here's an easy giveaway and a layup put up by MJ Randall. Being careless in the backcourt, a little press that time, pressuring the guard, and he gave it up, and when he tried to get it back, it was they threw it away. So Florida A&M leads four to nothing after the easy turnover in the backcourt. Mike Melvin weaving through. The men's team playing like the women were earlier. Press high, press hard, and get the ball back as soon as you can as Melvin goes back to Blunt. Blunt, the jumper just off the left elbow. It's no good off the back side of the iron. It's four to nothing, North Car excuse me, Florida A&M. They have the ball. It's Cameron Reeves. Reeves will hand this one all for Melton. 14 to shoot. Melton turning the corner, crosses over. Jumper inside the perimeter from 16. No, rebounded by Graves. Graves pushes it to the right side. It's down to the right corner. Blunt. And Blunt will back his way in. Still moving in, whips it cross court to Fennell. Pump fakes, driving baseline, inside for Claiborne, but taken away by the green shirts of FAMU. Reeves inside, taken away by Blunt. And Blunt able to turn past the defender. Blunt, he's got to take off, and he's going to be called for a charge. Ooh. That's his first, team foul number two. 
tough call. It looked like the guard slid in there at the last second. It looked like it might have been Reeves who slid in there to take the charge, but he would already made his commitment to go to the hole, and before Reeves slid in there, a tough call that time for Blunt. Another look. That looks like a little late for a charge call, yeah. in my opinion. As it stands, it's four to nothing. As Devin Palmer is going to go in now for Mike Melvin. The Eagles are over two from the floor, and they've turned the ball over, excuse me, five times in this game already. Cross court pass to the right, to the corner, driving in, and the layup missed, contested but rebounded by Blunt, and there's a the Rattler knee. down behind the play. Palmer's going to take the open three. That's no good. Rebounded by Blunt. And this is usually the time when they stop play, but getting up to his feet now is Moraine. Graves in the corner. That's halfway down and out, and Graves can't hold on to it, but now the Rattler down behind the play. They're going to have to stop this game. 15-54 to go in the first quarter. It's a media timeout. FAMU 4, North Carolina Central yet to score. This is Eagle Basketball on the NCCU Sports Network. As a multi-million dollar producer, Kimberly Williams, owner of Right Time Realty, has been assisting buyers and sellers for over 17 years. So if you or someone you know is looking to buy or sell a home, now is the right time to call Kimberly. Call 919-391-TIME or visit her on the web at timetobuyahouse.com. That's 919-391-TIME or timetobuyahouse.com. Don't just throw a tailgate, own the tailgate with a Bojangles Big Bow Box. Only Bojangles brings the flavor to every tailgate with mouth-watering chicken, fresh buttery biscuits, flavorful fixings, and freshly steeped legendary iced tea. Because how can you expect to win the game if you don't win the tailgate? Own the tailgate and feed all the hungry tailgaters in your group with an 8, 12, or 20-piece Big Bow Box. Bojangles, it's bow time, y'all.
Eagle basketball on the NCCU Sports Network. 53-45 is the score, 5.04 to go in regulation. And before the break, when this gym was exploding after the defense, I was saying the McDougal magic is back, and it just echoes what this gym was like four or five years ago when the Eagles had that 32-game home court one streak going. Yeah, it was magic in here every game. It would be people filling it up, and the energy was always good, and everyone expected a win, and we delivered. 53-45, that's Joe Simmons. I'm Jonathan Duran here inside McDougal McLennan Arena. It's the inbound to Desir, and he'll hand it back off for Cameron Reeves. Reeves will go inside for DJ Jones. Jones bounce pass down low, off target. Eagles get it back. Nice play setup though. The, the Jones didn't expect it and didn't dive as hard as he should, but it was really good defense that time by the Eagles staying with their man on the backdoor cut. Rattlers turn it over for the 21st time today. And not sure what the stoppage is for here, but it looks like we're ready to continue. Inbound goes to Mike Melvin. Melvin crosses over, moving up the floor. And we'll hand it all for Jordan Perkins. Perkins on the left side, moves it to the left wing for Fennell. Now back inside for Perkins underneath, and that one will go. Perkins with 11. And he's two assists away from a double-double. 55-45, Eagles by 10, their largest lead of the game. Reeves on the right side, hands it off for Melton. On the left, now a three on the way. That's no good, well long, brought down by Blunt. And Blunt will give it to Perkins. Perkins up the floor. Perkins to the left side to Fennell. Top of the floor, Blunt. The right side, Perkins. Under four to go. Inside, Blunt. Blunt rises. And that's going to be a clean block out of play. It sends us to our media timeout. 3.47 to go in regulation. 55-45 North Carolina Central. You're listening to Eagle Basketball on the NCCU Sports Network. The Sheraton Imperial Hotel located in Durham is just minutes away from the NCCU campus. This full-service hotel with 331 guest rooms and 34,000 square feet of banquet and meeting space can meet all your lodging and event needs. Whether it is a family or class reunion, church organization, or corporate function, our newly renovated ballrooms await you. The Sheraton Imperial Hotel is a proud supporter of NCCU Athletics. Here's a real post from a real Chick-fil-A guest. At Our Foodie Ventures writes, Quick lunch today. A Chick-fil-A grilled chicken club sandwich never disappoints. Chicken emoji licking lips emoji. Thanks, Our Foodie Ventures. Glad Chick-fil-A could be part of your ventures. It's the little things that make our grilled chicken club sandwich worth the trip. Like the backyard grilled flavor in every bite. Also, did we mention it has bacon? Insert bacon emoji. Share your stories at Chick-fil-A with hashtag the little things. Eagle basketball on the NCCU Sports Network. Joe Simmons and Jonathan Duran inside McDougal McLennan Arena. 3.47 to go here in regulation. It's Eagles 55, Florida a 45. What has North Carolina Central done so well in the second half? Defensively, they've done well, but offensively, they've executed at a high level. And it's one of the reasons why they've had the ability to do as well as they had in this half. They've done some tremendous things offensively, but defensively, I mean, I, I really love the intensity that they brought to the floor. There's Perkins on the left side. On the inbound, Perkins drives through in the layup. Count it. Again, a nice offensive execution. Coach Moten with a little twist, changing up the offense a little bit and playing Perkins at the two, and it's really paid off so far in this game. So North Carolina Central up by 12 now. Top of the floor, Melton. This crowd at full volume. Melton, the three, is no good. Rebounded by Jones. That won't fall either. 
Rebound by Melton again, charging through. Count it, goes against him. That's his third. Team foul number five for FAMU. And that's big right there for the Eagles. They're doing a really good job now of taking away the little things, and they're getting in the right spot. And when you make a few shots, sometimes it gets a little easier to play defense. The Eagles are on a 12-0 run right now as Core goes back in for Evans Dezier. And they've held FAMU scoreless for the last five and a half minutes. It's Justin Watley and Nick Fennell will change sides as they set up the press breaker. Blunt will inbound for Melvin. He has the ball tapped away out of bounds by Randall. The Eagles will move to the sideline. Blunt will set up and wait on the referee and the Eagles. And the official at the scores table checking on something right there. I'm not entirely sure what the discussion is. I think they might be changing something with the timer. It's 3.09 on the board right now with 29 seconds on the shot clock. And they reset the shot clock to 30. And they're going to bring both the coaches together here to talk this one through. Coach McCollum for FAMU and Coach Moten standing at midcourt. And I guess they got everything squared away here, so the shot clock goes back to 30. And the Eagles will inbound. Here's Blunt up the floor for Watley. Up it goes for Mike Melvin. Melvin, the layup is no good. Ball is loose on the floor, picked up by FAMU. Taken away by Justin Watley. Watley, showtime! Oh, yeah, big fella. And that's big right there because that gives the Eagles a 12-point lead. But it also creates a situation now. Oh, what's the call? And I think they're going to call a foul before the fast break. Oh, wow. Well, they call the foul at midcourt. I can oh, see it did. there. Wow, yeah, he did. So it's going to go against Reeves. That's the second. Team foul number six. 57-45 Eagles. Well, the good thing about that, they can run some more clock. Under three minutes to go. Here's Perkins inside the jump circle. 12 to shoot. Perkins lazily waiting for a decision. Stops at the perimeter, and now a foul will be called down low against Watley. That'll be his third. Oh, that's Team tough. number seven. That's tough. They ran up his leg and you know, fell down. It's not really his fault. He's just standing there. Two and a half minutes to go here in regulation. To inbound will be DJ Jones. Jones finds Reeves. Reeves across midcourt. To the left side, Randolph. Randolph looks to drive. Turns, tries to go up and under, nearly lost it. The shot was altered by Watley and rebounded by Fennell. And Fennell tied up in the backcourt, able to pass out of it to Perkins. Two minutes and some spare change remaining here in regulation. And the Eagles, can, again, can just melt time away. On the right side, Perkins. Perkins crosses over. He's going to drive. The Euro. floater on the Euro. Count that for two. Yeah, that and could be the one that changes everything now. This could be a wrap. And the Eagles now need to tighten up the defense and send this thing home with a stellar victory. Full timeout with 107 seconds to go. This is Eagle basketball on the NCCU Sports Network. It's the Eagles lead 59-45. North Carolina eye, ear, nose, and throat is now part of Duke Health. NCEENT offers complete eye care, including basic and cataract surgery, ear, nose, and throat care, including allergy and sinus, hearing aid, and speech therapy. North Carolina eye, ear, nose, and throat has five offices conveniently located in Durham, Cary, Chapel Hill, and Roxborough. Same-day appointments are available. 
Call 919-595-2000 or go to nceent.com. North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat is a proud sponsor of NCCU Athletics. Spoken for Communications specializes in speech, language, pathology, and occupational therapy for children of all ages and is a proud sponsor of NCCU Athletics. Spoken for Communications serves clients from Durham County to Bertie County. For more information on Spoken for Communications, call 919-361-1090 or online at www.spoken-for.com. Spoken for Communications, because every child deserves to be heard. Eagle basketball on the NCCU Sports Network. Jonathan Duran alongside Hall of Famer Joe Simmons. 98 seconds remaining here in regulation. Here's Melton on the right side. Melton, long distance three on the left. Missed, rebounded by Watley. And he'll give it to Mike Melvin. 85 seconds to go. Melvin in the middle of the floor. Turning, lost the handle on it, gets it back, goes to Blunt, and Blunt is fouled as he was going up. Didn't quite get it cleanly, but he'll get the foul. Yeah, he took it up like he was going to throw it down, but I don't know how he was going to throw it down the way he took it up. So. <laughs> foul charge to DJ Jones. The team foul number seven against Florida A&L. Jabri Blunt, if he's at the rim, he's going to crank it down as hard as he can. Rim wrecker. Him and Evan Claiborne. As Blunt's first free throw is up and good. Evan Claiborne, if I was to describe the typical dunk from him, is he goes up and he just wrenches the rim like he's trying to tear it off the glass. Yeah, he's got bunnies. He gets up high and quick. Second free throw from Blunt, and that's good as well. That's 23 for Jabri Blunt. He scored 56 points this week. That's pretty good, I think. It's a good week. On the left side, here is... Randolph, now Melton. Melton to the left elbow. The jumper is no good. Rebounded by Watley with a minute to go. And Watley will give it a blunt. Just a couple of possessions left in this game. And the pass goes to the right side to Perkins. Perkins turns his back to the defender. And 12 seconds to go. Perkins top of the floor. Off the screen to the left, Perkins driving, kicks to the corner, Watley the three, it's no good, rebounded by Florida A&M, and this might be their last chance down the floor. To the left, driving is Melton, and he's going to step out of bounds with 25 and 8 tenths of a second to go, and the Eagles can dribble this one out. They sure can, and you mentioned him having, what, 56 points this week? That would, you know, that, that beat Virginia a couple times <laughs> in some games. So uh, that's a good week for him. It beat NC State once, too. Yeah. Inbound goes to Perkins, and he's going to walk this across midcourt. And it doesn't look like the Rattlers are going to apply any pressure. And I tell you this, Florida A&M has had the most success against the Eagles recently. They had a win streak of two in conference play. And that's going to get a reset. And even more so, the Eagles will hold the Rattlers silent for the last eight minutes and 37 seconds of this game. 61 of 45, it's a maroon and gray victory. North Carolina Central opens up 2020 with a conference win over the Rattlers. 61-45, the Eagles win it, and the home win streak will dance on. The Eagles have now won consecutively at home nine straight games 61 45 it's a maroon and gray victory you heard it all right here on the nccu sports network the eagles post game report presented by kimberly williams right time realty comes your way next Spoken for Communications specializes in speech, language, pathology, and occupational therapy for children of all ages and is a proud sponsor of NCCU Athletics. Spoken for Communications serves clients from Durham County to Bertie County. For more information on Spoken for Communications, call 919-361-1090 or online at www.spoken-communications. 
be heard. The Sheraton Imperial Hotel located in Durham is just minutes away from the NCCU campus. This full-service hotel with 331 guest rooms and 34,000 square feet of banquet and meeting space can meet all your lodging and event needs. Whether it is a family or class reunion, church organization, or corporate function, our newly renovated ballrooms await you. The Sheraton Imperial Hotel is a proud supporter of NCCU Athletics. Here's a real post from a real Chick-fil-A guest. At Our Foodie Ventures writes, Quick lunch today. A Chick-fil-A grilled chicken club sandwich never disappoints. Chicken emoji licking lips emoji. Thanks, Our Foodie Ventures. Glad Chick-fil-A could be part of your ventures. It's the little things that make our grilled chicken club sandwich worth the trip. Like the backyard grilled flavor in every bite. Also, did we mention it has bacon? Insert bacon emoji. Share your stories at Chick-fil-A with hashtag the little things. As a multi-million dollar producer, Kimberly Williams, owner of Right Time Realty, has been assisting buyers and sellers for over 17 years. So if you or someone you know is looking to buy or sell a home, now is the right time to call Kimberly. Call 919-391-TIME or visit her on the web at timetobuyahouse.com. That's 919-391-TIME or timetobuyahouse.com. North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat is now part of Duke Health. NCEENT offers complete eye care, including basic and cataract surgery, ear, nose, and throat care, including allergy and sinus, hearing aid, and speech therapy. North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat has five offices conveniently located in Durham, Cary, Chapel Hill, and Roxborough. Same-day appointments are available. Call 919-595-2000 or go to nceent.com. North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat is a proud sponsor of NCCU Athletics. Don't just throw a tailgate. Own the tailgate with a Bojangles Big Bow Box. Only Bojangles brings the flavor to every tailgate with mouth-watering chicken, fresh buttery biscuits, flavorful fixings, and freshly steeped legendary iced tea. Because how can you expect to win the game if you don't win the tailgate? Own the tailgate and feed all the hungry tailgaters in your group with an 8, 12, or 20-piece Big Bow Box. Bojangles, it's bow time, y'all. Eagle basketball on the NCCU Sports Network. Joe Simmons and Jonathan Duran here inside McDougald McLennan Arena. The Eagles protect the nest, their ninth consecutive home win, and their first in 2020 and in MEAC play. This is the Eagles postgame report presented by Kimberly Williams, Right Time Realty. The final score, North Carolina Central 61, Florida a and 45. Joe, North Carolina Central, they go to the break tied but it really put the pressure on in the second half. And most impressively, they hold FAMU without a bucket for the last eight and a half minutes of this game. That was big. Defensively, they turned it up. They figured out a way to uh, cut off penetration and uh, really take away the one hand that was hot for FAMU. And when they did that, what they did is Coach Moten went to a two-guard lineup and uh, two point guards at the same time and basically uh, telling Jordan Perkins, uh, you know, handle the basketball and get us started, but we're going to take Fennell and put him on the shooter and just see if we can just cut his head off. We're not going to worry about what he can do offensively. We're just going to make sure we control and protect the basketball, but keep them from scoring and see if we can't win this game, and it worked well for the Eagles. So you look back over that trend for Florida A&M. They missed their last six shots from the floor. They were 0 for 6, 0 for 3 from the floor as North Carolina Central – forced two steals and seven turnovers from the Rattlers in that last passage of play. Jabri Blunt, 23 points and 11 rebounds, another double-double for him. Jordan Perkins close to one, 15 points and eight assists. He now has 380 in his career. He's checking down the number two spot, 29 assists away from tying Michael Wright for 409. And Devin Palmer, he was a big star in this game as well with 11 points. Yeah, Palmer found his wings today. Uh, you know, he's been struggling a little bit offensively. He found his wings, and he was able to soar a little bit when the Eagles needed them big in that first half. 
Again for North Carolina Central, every eagle that checks in scores. And they scored a field goal too, and that's the important thing. It's not they just got to the free throw line and knocked one in. Every eagle that came in today made a field goal. Rod Melton, 18 points, a team high for FAMU. And then 13 rebounds for DJ Jones along with 9 points. Randolph, 10 points for FAMU. The Eagles shoot 44% from, from the floor, 25% from the perimeter, and 85% from the charity stripe. 11 for 13, FAMU goes to the line just seven times. They're three for seven, four for 16 from downtown as well, and they shoot 36.5% from the floor. The rebounding numbers came a little closer together. FAMU does win it there, 37-28. The Eagles assist 11 times on 23 makes. FAMU six on 19, and the Eagles with 11 steals. The turnover 14 times, so they force FAMU into 24 turnovers. Again, with seven of them coming in that last eight and a half minutes. Yeah, and you do this, and uh, inexplicably, the defensive pressure was really good, and that was one of the things that saved the grace today because they, they, weren't, they were manhandled on the boards mostly in the first half, and they needed that defensive intensity, one, to get out and run a little bit and get easy buckets, but also, two, to put FAMU in a situation where they couldn't get back and set that defense with all those bigger guys and make it harder for us to get, in to ex get, execute, get into our execution of our offense. And, you know, hats off to the players for pushing that, you know, going out there today without possibly your two best offensive players and still finding a way to beat a team that's coming off an emotional high after upsetting I Iowa State just a few days ago. Well, Joe, like I said, I really felt like the McDougal magic came back today, but the Eagles – and this crowd, they're going to have to try to bottle it and bring it back 21 days from now on the 25th against Delaware State. The Eagles actually going to see Delaware State this weekend. They're going to start on Saturday at DSU and then go to Maryland Eastern Shore. The Eagles starting a four-game road track. Where do you see this team going now? They get that first win down, and now they have to go to Delaware State, which has always been a tough place for this Eagle team. It is, and Delaware State coming off a game today, I think, against Coppin State, who uh, – Dennis Scott just reminded me via Twitter that was one of those teams that I'd left out of my grouping when I was talking about elite teams. You can almost mention every team in the MEAC when you talk about elite teams this year because everybody's bunched together. But uh, Delaware State, of course, I think they may have been trailing a little bit earlier in that game. But they're a team that's going to fight you to the end, and they always play the Eagles tough. Uh, one of the things, that we, we were on top for so long that we play with a bullseye on our back. So every, we're going to get everybody's best every game in and out. And an update on the scores from earlier. Morgan State defeats Dell State 81-68. Games going towards conclusions. Eastern Shore for Howard 74-61. Two minutes left in that game. Seven and a half minutes to go in Baltimore. And South Carolina State has rallied ahead. They've outscored Coppin State 30 to 21 in the second half. Oh wow. And the Bulldogs now lead 30 to 50, excuse me, 60 to 58. And 6:30 today we'll have the final game of the first day. It'll be Bethune Cookman taking on Norfolk State. Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining me. Great to see you. Happy New Year. Hope the collars and black eyed peas and fried chicken treats you well this year, man. <laughs> All right, man. I, I still don't know why people eat that, but okay. Good luck <laughs> and prosperity and health, man. Uh, that's what they say. It sounds like a trip to the ER if you eat enough of that, though. Hey, I mean, just, just stick to the black eyed peas and you're all right, man. All right. Black eyes and the collars. You're good. <laughs> all right, man. 61-45, that's your final score. That's Joe Simmons, and we're saying good night here from McDougal McLennan Arena. Full game story and stats can be found on the official website of NCCU Athletics. It's NCCU, EaglePride.com. I'd like to send a special thank you to my parents who are always listening at home in the triangle. To Dennis Scott, Marilyn Fitz, and to you, Eagle fans, for listening to this afternoon's broadcast and doubleheader. The executive producer of the NCCU Sports Network is Kyle Serba. Special thanks to Dr. Ingrid Ricker McCree and all of the North Carolina Central University Department of Athletic staff for all their help as well. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. Where do you are? God bless and good evening. Our next broadcast on the NCCU Sports Network will be next Saturday as the Eagles go on the road to Delaware State. The women will play after the men. The men will play at 2 p.m., the men at 4. Excuse me, the men at 2 p.m. and the women at 4 on Saturday. That's our next broadcast. We'll see you then. For Joe Simmons, I'm Jonathan Duran. Happy New Year, Durham. I love you.
For highlights and stats and much more, fly on over to nccueaglepride.com, the official website of NCCU Athletics. Any retransmission or reproduction of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent from the North Carolina Central University Athletics Department. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.